We trust the lamb, not the donkey or the elephant. Do you think it's just easy for white men like you and me to pontificate about unity because the status quo kind of works for us? Yeah, I think I, I, I mean, that's an interesting critique. I, first of all, I mean, I think, you know, there is a tendency to discount the message because of the messenger, right? Like because of your social mm-hmm. location. Uh, but, but I do, I do say that like, oh, you're, you've, you've been blessed more, privileged more. So it's easy for you to say that, you know, when you're the one perpetrating whatever, then you, you cry unity. I mean, I think I'm pretty clear. Unity does not. Um, sometimes unity is used as a weapon to mm. not have accountability. Um, unity doesn't mean we don't expose and root out corruption. I mean, think about this. Paul writing to the church at Corinth and he's rebuking them strongly about their their sin and corruption, you know, sexual sin that they're allowing, getting drunk at the Lord's table, all this sort of terrible things. He calls up the Galatians for their heresy. It doesn't preclude any of that. In fact, the thing that destroys the fragile unity of a local body is sin, corruption, heresy, those things, um, and divisiveness um, over stupid things. So it doesn't preclude any of that. Um, Unity shouldn't be used as a weapon against it. I do think the way we go about these things yeah, and, even even as we are confronting very hard and difficult issues, and sometimes we have to um, speak truth to power, we have to always ask ourselves, what is our motivation? I think of the way that Paul talked to Timothy hmm. and urged him as a young pastor to, to stand on the truth, to stand against things that were wrong. He really couched it in the context of Paul's own testimony of, of being the chief of sinners of where he came from. He urges Timothy to exhibit these, the, the virtues of the fruits of the spirit. I would say, you know, they match the sort of fruits of the spirit as he's doing that. And even think of Paul's harshest letter, his harshest letter to any church, arguably first Corinthians, right? I mean, in that is also the, the letter where he puts the love chapter. So mm-hmm. in the middle of him rebuking this church, like, strongly in the middle of him talking about very divisive issues like the order of the worship and sign gifts and all these things, meat offered to idols. He stops and he says, look, uh, if we don't have love, none of this matters. And here's what love requires. So I think even in the context of us holding people accountable, of taking a position on orthodoxy, Christian orthodoxy, um, fighting the good fight, if you will, um, calling out things that are bad, Mm-hmm. I do think we have to ask ourselves, check our motives. What is my motive? Is my motive here to really do the right thing, or is it to be seen as doing the right thing, hmm. to become a sort of self-created hero in the eyes of people? Um, and then also say, am I, am I practicing love? Am I um, doing what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, where he says, love believes all things? Doesn't mean we're naive. Doesn't mean we hold each other accountable, but love gives each other the benefit of the doubt. Hmm. Am I assuming malice where there's maybe just incompetence? Am I assuming malice where maybe there's just misunderstanding? So I think all those things matter. The virtues still matter. Um, yeah. That makes sense. And look, we're always going to have division. Uh, this is why, and I have a whole chapter on cynicism, by the way. The church has always had divisions because it's always made up of sinners. I mean, like people are like, we need to go back to the New Testament church. I'm like, which one? <laughs> like Corinth? Corinth? You know, Ephesus? Like, so Paul's having to talk about this in the first century. It's nothing new, but nevertheless, I do think, you know, as, as Rome, as it says in Ephesians, um, the word for it is, is really to strive to, to do everything we can to maintain unity of the spirit, the bond of peace as much as we can, hmm. you know, as much as in our, in our power to do that. I'm Patrick. Thanks for watching this video. If you're passionate about ending tribalism in the church and giving Jesus your allegiance, you're not alone. We have a podcast and a book. They're both called Truth Over Tribe. You can download the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can buy the book on Amazon. I hope you'll check them out.